Hello everyone, this is in response to High Flying Dutchman's flawless design in birds. Um, I would like to thank High Flying Dutchman to begin with for not deleting this video response and actually allowing people to comment on his videos, unlike most creationists. Um, it's not a jab, it's a genuine thank you. Um, to begin with, birds aren't flawlessly designed whatsoever, and there are a number of features which really kind of point this out. First of all, birds have genes for making fully formed and functional teeth. Now, scientists don't have to go in and add any genes or do anything crazy. The genes are already there. Now, why would God create birds as is with the genes for making teeth? That makes no sense whatsoever. If anything, it's just extra um, DNA. It takes longer to replicate because of those genes. Why? Um, creationism simply can't account for that. Indeed, the best, ev the best explanation is evolution. Here's actually a picture of a chicken with the said teeth. Now another example of poor design in birds is the fact that the red blood cells of birds, which are responsible for carrying oxygen, have nuclei. Now the problem with that, and mammals don't have this by the way, is that it decreases the surface area, meaning that they can carry less oxygen to the tissues. Whereas if you simply remove the, the nucleus, you can get a biconcave disc shape, which drastically increases the surface area, allowing the red blood cell to carry more oxygen. Now why would they simply have this? The creation can't account for this, but evolution can, considering the fact that reptiles also are the other organisms that have um, nucleated red blood cells. Again, evolution explains it, and it's a poor design. I think my creator would, or at least I would like my creator to have the competency to make birds that can function optimally and have you know, nucleated red blood cells so they don't have to deal with all this. Another example in birds is there's something called the supercoracordius tendon, which um, is responsible for raising the wings during flight. Now, if something were designed from scratch, you would expect for it to be, you know, for a, a raising motion or whatnot of the wings, you would expect the muscle to originate, like, dorsally, and just insert into the end of the wings or somewhere near the humerus or whatnot to raise the, to raise the arms up. But this isn't what happened in birds. Instead, there's something called the supercoracordius tendon, which originates around the pectoralis muscle, which goes, wraps around, comes over and elevates the wing. Now why would this be? What function would that serve? Um, clearly it's an inferior design, but why would it have it? Well, in reptiles, that's exactly how it is. And this is a good example of an organism developing due to and under evolutionary constraints, in the sense of evolution can't simply just pop something out anew, um, change the entire scaffolding of an organism in one fell swoop. No, instead it, it evolves and adds on to what's already there. And this is a clear example of that happening. Again, if things were created as is, we wouldn't see organisms evolving under evolutionary constraints like we clearly do here. Um, one other thing real quick is, why, why just birds? Why not bats also? I mean, bats are flying, yet birds have pneumatic bones, you know, with, with air sacs in between them to lighten them up, but bats, bats have the typical solid mammalian bones. Like why, why would that be? Why the distinction? Now, on the other hand, as evolution would predict, ostriches, which are flightless, do have hollow bones. So I ask you, why is it that bats, which actually do fly, lack hollow bones, when ostriches, which do not fly, do have hollow bones? It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. If things were created in present form, however, if things were created by evolution, it, it not only makes sense, but it's what we would expect. Now, specifically moving into the species level, there are plenty of other examples of poor design in birds as well. For example, the blue-footed bo booby. Um, the female makes its nest, well, it actually doesn't make a nest, it just it lays its eggs on the bare rocks. Yet, during courtship, the male still goes and gathers nesting material and presents it to the, to the female. Even though the female is not going to use it and doesn't even make a nest, the male still does it, just like all other species of birds do. Now, if the blue-footed booby was created separately and independently of everything else, why would it have this evolutionary um, behavioral vestige? I mean, there's absolutely no reason for it. it. It does nothing, but yet it's still a simple example of behavior that's ingrained into the species because of its evolutionary history. Again, creation can't account for these pointless acts, and it's clearly not a flawless design. Now, another example of poor design in birds can be seen in a group of birds called the gannets, which are diving birds. Um, as such, they have closed nostrils to the you know, external environment so that when they dive, water doesn't go rushing into their nostrils. It's generally undesirable. Um, so, but how this happens, though, is it simply it, it's fused from the outside, yet on the inside, they still have all the functional uh, mechanisms, such as um, coana, septum, things like that, of a, of a functional air passage. So, my question is, if they were designed as is, 
why would they still have all the workings of an air passage and simply just have it fuse on the outside? It, it doesn't work. It makes no sense whatsoever. It seems to me like if they were created in present form, they would just be sealed off, or not even sealed off, but they would completely be lacking these um, evolutionary vestiges altogether. Why, why would you have the, the internal workings of a fully functional air passageway if you're not going to be using it? It makes no sense whatsoever if we were created in present form. However, evolution explains it perfectly. And as one would expect if evolution were true. So, in conclusion, th there is not a flawless design in birds whatsoever. There's a good design, yes. However, the bird is clearly an example of an organism that's evolving under evolutionary constraints. We wouldn't see this. We wouldn't see the enucleated red blood cells. We wouldn't see the supercoricoideous um, tendon attachment. We wouldn't see the, the vestigial teeth. We wouldn't see um, any of these things, any of the, the behavioral vestiges either, if things were created in present form. These are all only explainable by evolution. And which leads to another problem with creationism is that they take something that they don't understand, stand there in awe, and just say, oh, Jesus did it, instead of actually studying it in depth to see how it actually functions. They just say, thanks, Jesus, and move on. And that's the problem. Lastly, they, they also make it seem dishonestly, like the bird wanted to make the wing or wanted to do, it, do this or that, whereas instead of it actually being programmed into them. Now, there are two possibilities with this. The first most being that they know that evolution does not suggest this and are just saying it to make a point and be intellectually dishonest, even though they know that that's not what it said. The second possibility is that they simply don't know any better, in which case this is basic biology, basic evolution, and they shouldn't be out making videos about something they're utterly ignorant about. So either way, they're at a loss um, in terms of honesty goes. I mean, it, it simply makes no sense. I mean, it's clear from modern birds and reptiles that they share a common ancestor by a number of things, such as the nucleated red blood cells, which I already mentioned, there are six features of the skull alone. I mean, they've got scales on legs, they've got an identical yoked egg, and also, something else that's interesting that you never hear about, is that female birds and some reptiles are the heterogametic sex. That's, you know, ZW. Whereas in humans, XY are the males, and birds, females are the XY, although they're termed ZW. And once again, birds are just another example of organisms which are only developed by evolution, and it's clear if you actually study at them in depth as opposed to saying, wow, looks complicated. Thanks, guys.